Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I don't think there can ever be a shortage of videos about and that is how to avoid shopping more specifically I think to this channel and like this community how to avoid new releases and many of these strategies will work beyond makeup like whatever you whenever you're feeling that want to buy things whatever that new thing is a lot of these ideas as well and some of the topics i'll be talking about aren't just about new releases but like how to avoid shopping how to stop shopping period we have a lot to talk about in this video and there's a lot of ideas so if you're coming here to be like shauna i kind of spend too much on makeup clothes hair care sometimes i impulse buy sometimes i emotional spend sometimes i just get sucked into a makeup release hopefully some of your concerns are addressed in this video Let's get into it. Number one is the most practical kind of thing period that will cover a new release, kind of anything, is never buy the thing, whatever it is, the day that you are interested in it, ever, period. I mean, the day you want it or discover it. A lot of our impulse buys comes from cultivating that as a habit. You may even think that you're acting on something good, that you're getting something that you think that you'll like, or even something that you feel like you'll need. And impulse buys are just that. They're purchases that often have very little thought put into them because we bought them so quick that we don't have the actual time or space to think about them critically. If you're at home, and you're like let's say on sephora and you see this new palette that you love it can be really easy to talk yourself into it i love these shades i love this formula i don't have this color story and you can find a lot of ways to just talk yourself into it and this is especially true for things that are on sale a recent story i found myself on the bowden's website in my video shot a timeline it was only like three or four days ago i was on bowden's website and i saw that they were having a 30 percent off everything sale a lot of things on that website are like out of my price range especially the shoes but with a 30 percent off sale they're like on the cusp of like the top of my budget so i saw these boots and i have been actively looking for a black pair of boots and i don't actually know if i will get them this season it's looking like not, but I have been looking out for black boots. I feel like I've checked every store, nothing yet. I also, last year and the year before, were looking at brown boots and I would truly be happy with a dark pair of brown boots, not a light pair, but I digress. I was on the website a couple days before because I had just discovered the brand a couple days before. I saw the boots and I just kind of scrolled past. There was no real reaction to them. I'm now on there with the sale i see these boots they're a light brown they're not the black or the dark brown that i had in mind they were like a completely different color and they also are kind of more lug sole which is exactly what i told myself i didn't want but i was so sucked into the red detail on the sides and then the scallop trim on the top i was like wow i need these in my life my life will not be complete without these boots like they will transform my relationship with my clothing. I, I, I wanted to buy them so badly. I felt like it was the most beautiful boots I'd ever seen, yet just completely scrolled past them like four days ago. When we're in the moment, like when I'm in that moment, it can be super hard to wait a week. I know I've said wait a week and a lot of people out there are like, just wait a week. And I told myself to wait because they were having this sale for like four days. So I'm like, you wait till the next day. So when I'm saying wait 24 hours, this is like the first, like ultimately we wanna get to waiting seven days, but in the moment, I feel like a lot of us, when we're at the highest kind of peak time of lusting after something, waiting for waiting 24 hours feels like the maximum I can do, like the utmost I could do. Um, and 24 hours is usually like the minimum amount of time it will take for the high to come down um, if it's something I'm lusting after that much. 
and I don't need the high to go away. I need the high to come down just enough where I can be reasonable and rational. And it doesn't mean that the purchase, like you shouldn't buy it. It just means you need the time to be rational about it. And a good example of this are the Bite Beauty lipsticks that I purchased a couple of weeks ago, maybe months ago now at this point. And I put space between the time I wanted it and the time I bought it a couple of months and I didn't end up buying it, but I need that space to think about it. And when I'm in that state, that truly like highest state of lust, I do not trust myself to make a good decision. Like I just don't feel rational. What is also a strategy that you can build into this is putting your wallet in another room. Um, I do not bring my wallet into my bedroom period. That's where I do most of my leisure time, like leisure internet use. So if I'm gonna buy something, on an impulse, it's gonna be in my bedroom. I very rarely sit at my desk and like casually scroll the internet. If I'm gonna buy something when I'm at my desk, it's like just get in, get out kind of done thing. And so by not having my wallet, just kind of like a hand reach away, prevents me from impulsively or instinctually just reaching over and grabbing it and having it close by supports my impulsivity. I found that by putting my wallet in another room and often in a bag, I have been at some points too lazy to get out of bed to buy, like to go get it. Which also tells me like, if you're too lazy to do that, how important is that thing anyways? What I'll say to myself is like, oh, I'll get it later. Like next time I go up to use the bathroom, I'll just get it later. And so while like I might think about getting it eventually, this by getting it later gives me even like an hour to just like let some of that high come down and just gives a little bit of space and helps to reduce impulsivity. And so when I have to get out of my bed or get out of my bedroom, walk over and get my wallet, that feels like a decision. Whereas if it's kind of next to you, just lying around, it's just, it's easy to to make a purchase and then also once you buy something once especially a high ticket item and you have your wallet nearby and have your credit card put into these websites it can just be easier to do it again so my second tip for the leave your wallet outside of where you spend your time and your your shopping time also remove your credit card from any website that you that you shop period have to go and get your card and make it a choice and make it a decision. And also just remove your ability to impulse buy. My last solution for impulse buying is to create a time frame for shopping. So as an example, um, you can say that only in the evening between seven and nine is my shopping time. Not that you have to be spending two hours every day shopping, but if you have something you wanna look at or look for, that is your time and your window to shop and no other time throughout the day or maybe it's even like only on sundays between this time is my shopping time this is for a few reasons the first is that it reduces your mindless scrolling because if you can't be shopping you can't be mindlessly scrolling and i do this a lot um in bed or like when i've had apps on my phone or when i haven't put in time time frames to shop I don't usually need it, but there are certainly some times of the year, or even just moments where I do need that. And um, I've also done this at lunchtime before, and I know a lot of you do as well. So if you create windows for shopping, it means you're creating an intention. And so hopefully it will cut out boredom scrolling and just aimless scrolling. So you're not just uh, impulsively buying anything. And also hopefully it helps create intention. like. If you only have this short window to shop, hopefully you're going in with that shopping, to that shopping window with a goal or something that you wanna get or check out before it's over. Otherwise you could like waste time by just looking at everything because you wanna shop. And also an additional benefit is that there's so many things that I've encountered where I never knew I needed until it just kind of showed up or I saw it somewhere like Instagram. And so if you remove your interaction with, so if you see something on Instagram or somebody else's feed and you cannot shop in that moment, you are much less likely to impulsively buy it. And if you've created this window as well, um, where even if like you can't even check a price on something until it's your shopping window, you're much less likely to shop just simply because you're interacting with these websites less. 
Now, I want to talk about the potential problem of quitting cold turkey. And a lot of people experience this as a problem um, where they put themselves on a no buy or a low buy um, and then they struggle, they fall off, and then they impulsively buy so many things. And I've learned this year that no buys are just not for everybody. I don't regret my no buy and I totally believe that it was helpful for me, but there's a lot of people out there who are quitting shopping cold turkey can just do much more damage than if they went on a budget as an example. And even if you look at something like quitting smoking, there's lots of different approaches. There are people who quit cold turkey, but I don't feel like that's the majority. There's a lot of people who will ease out of it, like through things like patches or like smoking cessation devices. And there is no shame if you're somebody who's in the more gradual group. And I think you need some self-awareness to know which one you would be. And for some people, they truly have a shopping addiction. And so if it's an, if it's an addiction, it can be very difficult to quit cold turkey. Another common example I've heard about referring to things like no buys is like akin to restrictive dieting. A lot of people feel restrictive diets because they are too restrictive. They can't eat any of the things that they want to or love eating and then they just fall off and are kind of right back where they're at. And I think for a lot of people, a no buy is that thing, but like for their finances or shopping habits. We all have different relationships to shopping, to consumption, to our money. And so I've heard a lot of people on my channel say that they failed a no buy once, twice, three times, and they feel like absolute crap about it, but also feel like they should be doing a no buy. And so my suggestion for you is that the no buy and quitting cold turkey it might not be in your best interest and you have to figure out which camp you're in and gradually coming down from it or from a shopping addiction or excessive shopping and spending might just be the better approach that will reduce um, or eliminate shopping binges and I think I've had some as a result of the no buy or low buy too. Let me know your thoughts about this one in particular down below. Number three are habits. A lot of us shop or I mean a lot of us the way we shop is built around habits this one will take some time and practice because you're gonna have to identify what your bad habits are and also what your triggers are for me emotional shopping is the most significant source of shopping that I do or I would say unintentional or shopping that is not intentional is emotional shopping and more specifically destructive spending I buy things in order to prove a negative point about myself, like I'm a bad decision maker or that I'm worthless or untru untrustworthy or a failure. And so one of the things that, I mean, leaving the wallet in the other room and unsubscribing from newsletters and um, there's lots of things that have reduced this but not totally eliminated it. And so one of the things that I've learned is that you have to replace bad habits with good ones and that's why a lot of people struggle on the no buys is that shopping is the crutch that a lot of people use to deal with problems so trigger let's say bad day at work shopping is the solution and a way you deal with your emotions and the way that you deal with the stress around you so if you remove the habit the thing that you use to cope with stress. You are just left with stress and no solution and therefore you may just be likely to go back or binge on shopping. For me, now it's like I have to deal with the emotional trigger and now put in a different habit in lieu of spending or in lieu of shopping. I've heard a lot of people, I've heard a lot of solutions about how to uh, put in a different habit or also ways to deal with emotions and one of the solutions I've heard for the emotional component has been naming the feeling or saying it out loud or journaling about it so like okay right now I'm feeling really low I'm feeling like a failure right now I'm feeling really sad I'm feeling really angry at myself for making this bad decision what I've also read is that naming emotions helps to take away their power 
and I have been able to complete like significantly reduce my destructive spending by this practice and um, I've also established something called the emotion log or the feeling log that like I do this like on a daily basis and I also have something called a toolbox so I'm gonna talk about the toolbox uh, and a couple more points down from here we need alternatives to our bad habits if I address my emotions I'm also more likely to catch myself before I do something negative or at the very least I'm aware that I want to spend for this like particularly emotional reason or in a destructive way while I still may want to do it, it has significantly less power. Other solutions might be like if you need an emotional component, you might need like a different component. Journaling does help to figure out how you feel and why to address the emotions. But there's also some other things like literally going outside for a walk, like actually leaving your home in the space where you could potentially be spending. Just hop off your device, your computer and just change course. Anything else? besides being on a device is what you should be doing. Maybe go make yourself a cup of tea. Maybe go read a book. Maybe do some stretching, like anything. Um, maybe paint your nails. But establish a habit that you can do instead when you're in that kind of way. Um, I often do Sudoku, I have one by my bed and I go to it in times of stress. Number four is removing things as rewards. This is a specific type of habit that a lot of people participate in and I know a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people will buy themselves a physical reward that is specifically tied in to an emotion, which can be a negative or a positive emotion and or it can be both. Not only is this a bad habit, but it ties spending, or as another way we tie spending to an emotional response. So an emotion, I'm sad today because of a bad performance review, can lead to an automatic thought, let's buy a latte. And these connections can be made without our knowing and they can strengthen over time as we continue to use and flex this habit, sometimes without, and I think maybe most of the time without us even knowing. And so it strengthens as we continue this thought and this habit. And I don't want to deprive anybody of an award or something to help them feel better, but it also doesn't have to be physical or financial. So instead try a reward that is not monetary. Tonight I'm going to paint my nails, job well done girl, you freaking deserved it. If you have, if you've had a hobby that you've previously loved to do, but maybe have fallen off for whatever reason, especially because of time constraints, Perhaps this is a good opportunity to draw yourself back in. Like, hard day? Here's some time to needlepoint today. Or, I'm gonna paint today. And that could be a really great way to create some space for yourself. And one of the things that I've learned is that acts of self-care, all of those are acts of self-care, and acts of self-care might not be necessarily the thing that we wanna do the most. Like, sometimes all I wanna do is watch YouTube videos at the end of the day but that might not actually be the thing that I need. Often I need time away from the internet and away from YouTube and having that be the last thing I see or spending large quantities on uh, YouTube before I go to bed is just not always the best thing for me. And while I wanna do it, it might be something that contributes to spending or wanting stuff or maybe feeling jealous or unsatisfied with my own life. I need ways to get off that and so it's the best thing for me to maybe read because I do enjoy reading before bed or playing Sudoku before bed. Those are things that I do genuinely enjoy and the first couple of times I do it, it might not feel like the thing I want to do the most, even if it's an activity I do enjoy, but a thing that can really, we can really reap the benefits of and then we can develop into a good habit as well. Number five is create a toolbox. I have, no, I have a Notion page called The Toolbox and this is the page I go to when I'm trying to catch myself in the act of something. So when I talked about earlier about identifying feelings and naming them, I do that here. And the same thing with automatic thoughts, I challenge them here. So when I was first trying to do this, like I was always told you need to catch yourself. 
doing it. And I found it hard because I was having trouble catching myself doing it or catching myself and then doing the exercise. So it was always like I never had the exercise readily available in an easily accessible way or even something that I could check on from time to time. And this was especially true if I was out, like if something happened while I was out, usually this material would be at home somewhere and I just never made it a priority to put these things into a place that I could see even if I had them on hand. So what I've done is I have a clearly titled page for every kind of thought. For me, automatic thoughts or anxious, anxious thoughts are some really important ones. And they're on the page with a clear title, queued up and ready to go. And there's always like a clean new worksheet in there every time I want to click on it. The first couple of times I didn't catch myself in the middle of it. I caught myself maybe at the end of the day when I realized what happened upon reflection. And eventually over a couple of times, I was able to start catching myself in the act and then also um, preventing some of the things too but I think catching myself in the middle is the most important because some of the some of the things that we do emotional spending as an example or feeling negative emotions like that's not gonna go away for the rest of our lives like negative things are gonna happen and so I also know that motivation and willpower these things are not consistent across our lives so there's sometimes where I'm really good at not doing these negative things or going to a negative habit but there's other moments where I need more help and I also decided to do this in a really clear way for spending which is something that I um, kind of this idea was kind of built in collaboration with a friend of mine one of the things that I've done is read this if you are about to emotionally spend or read this if you're about to make a purchase over $150. Or read this, whatever kind of topic that you're thinking of. For each subject, I have a different kind of message in there. Some things, it's just checking in with my financial goals. They're all there. And before I make, I consider at this moment in my life, a purchase over $150, something that can potentially, like that could have a negative impact if it's not considered. And especially, this is especially true if I make more than one. And so if I make three of these kinds of purchases in a month, or I do it a couple of times a month for several months, that can get me so off track so quick. So these larger purchases absolutely need to be considered. And it's even more destructive if I make a $150 impulse purchase. Checking in in that process and then creating the habit of checking in is something that I'm like it's relatively new the toolbox for dealing with negative emotions can, that can lead to some of these things has been ongoing for longer but using these habits to check in while i'm shopping is a newer development and so you can build these things one at a time and maybe start with the thing that is or has affected you the most and for me that was destructive spending so that was the place i started first and spending 30 40 even an hour up at at once minutes i don't know why i didn't say that um can help you so significantly in the future and when you're in the moment that is not the best time to create the thing that you need you already need it in place by the time you actually need it so if you're interested in doing something like this yourself start with one area and then build out from there over time and this is a really clear strategy that I've devised. And it's one I've been able to, to identify a bad habit and, and then act on it. Like I've actually been successful with this. And what I found is that in the past, I found bad habits and then I've named them, but then I've never done anything about them. And naming them is just simply not enough. And in order to change them, we need to come up with a solution. And in 2020 i was like oh just wait a week or you know i thought that would be good enough but it just wasn't and i needed stronger solutions and it's also a way to keep your priorities and goals up front too number six um get off instagram do more activities offline and if Instagram is not the most triggering place for you, then whatever that is, like if it's YouTube, get off YouTube. For me, it's Instagram because anytime I've been on Instagram after some kind of leave, I'm usually fine for a couple of days. But then any more time than that, 
I find myself feeling shitty about myself, feeling unsatisfied with my life, with the things that I own, feeling discontent, and also just wanting to shop. And I don't like either of those things. And even I've, I've also found myself doing this, even if there's people who are like doing a project pan or shop my sash, like seeing other people, even if they're trying to be intentional, doesn't always help me be intentional. And I find Instagram more triggering because Instagram is less curated with, and also with sponsored posts. I feel like I have less control than YouTube. And like, yes, you've subscribed to people, but um, I feel like I log on and I'm just inundated with this newness. Um, and sometimes I see things I don't wanna see, even like through a hashtag if I'm trying to be intentional. Maybe this is just my ignorance with some of the settings, but I personally find YouTube to be a much more curated experience. I find that I have more control over what I see than Instagram. And what, what I realize is one of the more important distinctions is that YouTube has thumbnails so if somebody's let's say talking about a haul on instagram versus youtube i can see that they're doing a haul and i don't get to see any of the language i just see the thumbnail and that is much less triggering for me than like being put into the middle of the content on instagram and so i can actually say yes or no to watching that content with seeing much less of it up front and or getting into the heart of the content I also find that in places online, like Instagram as an example, if I, let's say, never went on Instagram for a year, maybe never went on YouTube for a year, there's a lot of things that I would have never learned about and bought. I would not know, or at least I would have much less knowledge about things like sales or new launches, new launches in specific. So if you only checked Instagram or a website when you were going to make a purchase, you would only know about things at that time and not constantly be inundated with newness all the time. So you would never know that there was a new release or you missed a product or find products you never know you needed because you're not actually getting that information. That's not always possible all the time and this might help significantly if you um, remove uh, specific emails as well. But I like that idea because sometimes I wonder how much would I have bought if I just never knew about it in the first place, a lot less. When you're offline and you're doing things like reading, painting, literally anything else offline, you are not interacting with ads or consumer content. You have the ultimate control. And one thing I've heard a lot of people saying is like, what's the difference between reading or like watching YouTube, like if people love watching YouTube or like what's the difference between reading and watching movie? And I do think this question is largely coming from a place that people romanticize reading and treat it as like more elevated or sophisticated or people who read are like better people than people who watch movies as an example. With movies, there can also be consumer content there as well. And you're also like one click away if you're watching on a laptop from like finding a thing you like and then searching it up. So for me, the benefit of doing anything offline is just being away from the ads and the consumer content. And the more that you can do that, I think the better off you will be and the more content that you will be with your own life and feeling secure in your own life because you're not interacting with content that people have better, nicer things than you, or you feeling like you want those things, or feeling like other people have better, nicer things than you. And Instagram really lends itself to comparison. So those are all the strategies I have to share with you today. I'd love to know yours if you have some, uh, <laughs> if you have your own. We can all benefit from each other's experience, and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. I would love if you would subscribe to follow this channel with Vlogmas, and if you would love to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.